Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a mutated monster toad cake. This cake design is inspired by the movie Love and Monsters, which you can watch right now on demand or buy on digital. I don't want to give too much away, but they do explain how the animals become mutated in the first few minutes of the movie, so I feel like I'm safe telling you guys the story of this toad monster. The gist is, an asteroid is headed towards Earth, but the humans destroy it before it hits. The good news is, the humans are saved! The bad news is, the fallout causes all these cold-blooded animals to mutate into giant monsters. So I'm making a cake of the mutated toad monster that lives in a backyard pool. Because I love it. If you like this video, let me know by liking this video, and also subscribe to this channel for a new cake video every week. So let's get started. I'm starting out with some green buttercream and vanilla cake. I have two larger layers for the body and two slightly smaller layers for the head. I'm carving the cake with a serrated knife starting with the head. Nothing too complicated because all the details will be sculpted in modeling chocolate later. For the body, I'm sculpting dents in the front to separate the arms from the chest. Next, I'm taking all the cake scraps that I just cut off the cake and I'm crumbling them up with my hands. This is exactly how you make cake balls. But rather than cake balls, I'm using this as a filler for my toad cake. I'm adding buttercream until I like the consistency. So basically I can poke a hole in it and it still keeps its shape. That's perfect. So now I'm taking the cake ball dough and I'm filling in the back of the toad. I could absolutely make the back out of cake, but I wanted to use the cake scraps because I don't want to waste any cake. Plus cake ball dough is extremely delicious. <laughs> the cake is sculpted, so now I'm crumb coating the cake. That just means I'm covering the entire cake in a thin layer of buttercream. I start with an offset spatula and then I smooth everything out with a bendable scraper. This scraper is great for those like hard to smooth areas, like the toad's armpits. <laughs> They're silky smooth. The next step is to cover the cake in a layer of modeling chocolate. This is that final layer that goes onto the cake and also the stuff that I sculpt all the fun details out of. I trim away the excess chocolate and then I blend any seams with sculpting tools. I'm shaping the head slightly and I'm mapping out the toad face before I dive in and start adding the details. I'm adding a chunk of softened modeling chocolate to the nose and I just blend it in. Easy peasy. For the nostrils, I'm stabbing the chocolate with a sculpting tool and I just open that hole slightly. This is a really easy way to sculpt nostrils. It kind of flares out a bit. For the frog's left eye, I'm adding another chunk of modeling chocolate and then I make an eye socket by pressing into that chocolate with a ball tool. Then I just place a marble-sized ball of chocolate into the socket and I refine the eye with my sculpting tools. He's a little grumpy. <laughs> He's a monster, so. This toad's eyes are pretty interesting and they're definitely mutated. <laughs> so the left eye is a bit smaller than the right eye. In the movie, it looks like the left eye has been damaged somehow. It's a bit cloudy and I'll paint that in later. I'm adding some texture to the skin with a small ball tool and I absolutely love this effect. The result looks like it would be really difficult to sculpt, but in reality, it's really easy. You just wanna repeatedly dab. And onto the toad's right eye. So just like the other eye, I'm sculpting the eye socket and then placing a ball of modeling chocolate in and then refining the eye shape. I decided to open the toad's mouth slightly. So to do that, I'm cutting away at the mouth with a knife and scooping some of that cake out so that there's an opening just below that top lip. When I started this cake, I didn't necessarily plan to have his mouth open, but there's always room for adjustments. 
Now I just place a layer of modeling chocolate onto the mouth to cover any exposed cake. And then I blend it in. I'm sculpting some of the details inside the mouth, including the toad's giant gums. Now I can add the bottom lip with a little bit of modeling chocolate, and blend it in. Lots of blending. I want to introduce another texture to the skin, so to do that I'm making a parchment piping bag and I'm filling it with royal icing. Royal icing is made of egg whites and powdered sugar. The reason I'm using royal icing is because the texture is perfect to make round little bumps on my toad's skin. I'm making them all different sizes and I want to make sure that they're placed randomly. I have dents, I have bumps, and now I want to add another texture. So I'm sculpting a hole into the chocolate and I'm filling it with royal icing. I think this looks awesome. However, if I'm being honest, something about this kind of grosses me out. <laughs> the other textures I'm completely fine with, but this one makes me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Here I have a bowl of clear gelatin and a small balloon blown up just slightly. And I'm dipping the balloon into the gelatin, coating it. I'll put a link in the description to a video where I show you how to make this gelatin so that you guys can try it out. It's coated, so now I let it set overnight. It's dry, so now it's time to pop the balloon. And guess what? I forgot to grease the balloon with shortening or oil before coating it in the gelatin. So the balloon is sticking, big time. The frog in the movie has these clear bubbles on its skin that look just like this. So I'm really happy with the result. Even if the process could have gone a little smoother. <laughs> now I'm adding green modeling chocolate onto the cake board in a circle around the toad. This is going to be the bottom of the pool that the toad lives in. Now I'm rolling out some modeling chocolate and I'm adding a brick pattern to it with a texture mat. Then I just trim two brick strips. I'm wrapping the strips around the edge of the green circle and that's going to represent the edge of the pool. The last thing to sculpt is two eye stalks on the top of the toad's head. I mean, what's a mutated toad without eye stalks? Now it's time to paint. So I'm layering food color in a way that's similar to watercolor, starting with green. I let it seep into all that texture. This part is always super rewarding. I put so much effort into adding all that texture and once I add the color, it really pops. There are some really fun monsters throughout the movie, but I chose the toad for two reasons. The first is I really love sculpting and painting the toad's skin. There's all those dents and bumps and bubbles. It's quite grotesque. And that makes for a really fun cake sculpture. <laughs> the second reason is because I like that there's a hint of humor to the toad. Being that it kind of hangs out in a pool in someone's backyard. <laughs> I mean, this toad could have been in a lake or any other body of water, but it's in a pool. It reminds you that these monsters exist in the real world. Remember how I said that the toad's eyes are super mutated? Well, I wasn't kidding. The toad doesn't have just one iris and one pupil, like a regular old eye. It has two in each eye. This actually had me thinking, is something like this real? Is it possible? And it turns out, yes, it is. Kind of. So there's an eye condition called polychoria, where a person has two pupils in one iris. So it's like a double pupil. So it isn't exactly two separate irises like in our toad friend here, but it's pretty close. I have a few things to do before I add the teeth, starting with painting the inside of the mouth with some pinks and browns. To create a foggy cataract effect in the toad's left eye, I just paint the iris like normal, but I paint the pupil light gray. I really like the way that the royal icing bumps 
picked up color differently than the chocolate. They're a bit darker. I feel like that makes them look a little bit more wart-like. <laughs> I honestly didn't realize that would happen. I love cake surprises. The gelatin bubble is a completely different material than the chocolate that it's resting on, so it looks a little disconnected. So to fix that, I'm painting some color up the sides of the bubble so that that transition from chocolate to gelatin is a little more gradual. The front of the toad is painted, so now I'm going to work on the back. I'm not worried about making sure that everything matches as far as colors. I actually prefer to run with it and just add whatever color I feel like. <laughs> There's no rules, just run with it. It looks like an abstract watercolor painting. <laughs> time to prep the pool. So I'm adding some light and dark areas on the inside and I'm dirtying up the bricks a bit with some muddied color. This is a post-apocalyptic world so the pool is looking pretty unkempt and a bit swampy. To enhance this I'm making edible grass by snipping vanilla wafer paper with scissors. I imagine that the grass would grow along the inside and the outside of the bricks. I'm adding crumbled up cake that's colored green to represent moss that's growing in the pool. Remember that gelatin I used earlier? Well, I added a little bit of green food color to it and I'm pouring it into the pool and that's gonna represent water. Here I have wafer paper circles that are actually left over from a previous cake and I'm going to use those to create mini leaves that'll float in my pool. I'm painting them in brown and green tones. Rather than a simple tapered oval shape for the leaves, I want them to have more texture and more character, so I'm using a hole punch to cut out the leaves with pointed ends. These are pretty darn adorable. <laughs> this is a case where I experimented with an idea, you know, using a hole punch, and I am pleasantly surprised by the effect. I'm sprinkling the leaves around the toad's legs and throughout the pool. It's like mini edible leaf confetti. <laughs> I'm covering the outside of the pool with more cake crumbs in green and brown, and I'm sprinkling crushed up cookies as dirt. To emphasize the mouth and eyes, I'm brushing piping gel onto both. This is one of the last things that I do so that I'm sure that all the food color is completely dry. Because if it were a little wet, then the piping gel would start to smudge the color. The toad's teeth are extremely small, so I'm using royal icing to pipe each tooth. Piping into a toad mouth isn't the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> so if a tooth is a little off, I just take a thin brush and I move the icing around until I like the way it looks. These little teeth make me so happy. I really enjoy them. This toad is a slobbery, drooling mess, so I'm adding drips of piping gel onto its lips. I also get to use a technique that I have been meaning to try out for years. So I'm adding long strips of gelatin onto a nonstick mat, and I'm letting it dry for about 15 minutes until it's gummy in texture. Then I peel it off the mat, and it makes for some amazingly realistic, stringy mouth spit. <laughs> it's just like in the movie. The toad opens its mouth, and it's huge, and it has this, you know, stringy spit in there, and it's a, it's a monster. <laughs> to show the scale of the monster toad, since it's so giant in the movie, I'm including a little blue pool tube. I think that the mini bricks, the tiny leaves, and that little pool tube really help to tell the story. This toad is in a life-size pool that is meant for human people. <laughs> and there you have it, a mutated monster toad cake. You know what I love about this cake? I use a ton of materials and techniques. So there's modeling chocolate, piping gel, royal icing, wafer paper. I mean, I made water, bubbles, and spit all out of gelatin. Now let's cut the cake. I'm cutting. 
adding two slices for this one. <laughs> Wanna get into that mouth. If you like this cake, let me know by giving this video a like and subscribe for a new cake video every week.